This video goes with the 8.5 practice form G, which is from the geometry text, chapter 8, section 5. And uh, we'll look at some problems. Most of these use the law of sines. Sometimes they might have to use triangle sums to uh, find some of the missing sides. Um, you know, we'll just, just see what we um, come up on on these. So let's uh, do a couple of these. Uh, let's look at number 3. Now, for every one of these, I need to draw a diagram to represent the information. So, I don't think that there's any way you can actually use the page and get enough room to adequately do the problem. So, you really need to do these on a separate sheet and show all the steps, not just the answers. It says we have triangle GHK, so we'll do number three up here. So, I need to sketch a triangle to represent the information. So we've got triangle GHK. Uh, angle G has a measure of 105. Angle K has a measure of 32. And the distance from G to H, which is little k, is 10.2. So that's the information that we're being given. And they want us to solve the triangle. That means we need to find all the sides and all the angles. First thing we should do is find out what angle H is. I can see, before we get started on this, that we're given angle K and its opposite side. So it lets us set up one part of the law of sines for this. We need angle H for this side, and we need angle G for this side over here. So we need to calculate angle H. If we do 130, uh, 105 plus 32, we get 137. If we subtract that from 180, we get 43. So angle H is 43. Now we've got enough to set up the law of sines and find the other two missing parts. Um, sine 32 over 10.2 is equal to sine 43 over, call this GK, which is the same thing as little h, and uh, that's also equal to the sine of 105 over its opposite side, which is KH otherwise known as little g. So using this first ratio, we can basically find out what gk is, and then doing the outside, we can find out what kh is. So we're going to cross multiply and simplify. gk is going to be 10.2 times the sine of 43 divided by sine 32. Might as well go ahead and go for KH. KH, which uses these, is going to be 10.2 times sine 105 divided by sine 32. So, punch that in the calculator and see what we get. So uh, for the GK, 10.2 uh, times uh, sine of 43 and divided by sine of 32. I don't think I hit my equals. Okay, let's do this over again. 10.2 times the sine of 43 divided by sine of 32 equals 13.127. Again, they want this rounded to the nearest tenth, so 13.1 for GK. Let's find KH, 10.2 times the sine of 105 divided by sine of 32. Let me make sure I'm 
make sure I uh, did my divide. Okay, so divided by sine of 32. I get 18.59, which rounds off to 18.6 to the tenths place. So we've completely solved this triangle. We found out that H was 43. We found out that KH is 18.2. And we found out that GK is 13.1. That's what's going on with the number three. Notice the amount of space it took to do number three. It's gonna. It would be really hard to try to get all of these on one page, and just having answers without setting the problem up isn't really doing the work. Let's look at say number six. See what's going on with number six down here. So let me bring this up. So same idea for number six. Uh, what we want to do is to sketch the triangle to represent it. So now we're doing number six. We've got triangle DEF. Angle D has a measure of 35. So D is 35. DE is 6.3. And EF is 7.5. And they want us, all they have to do, all we have to do on this one is find the measure of angle F. So we don't have to completely do this one. So let's look and see what pattern we have here. We've got angle D and we've got its opposite side. And 6.3 is opposite angle F. So we can use the law of sines and in this one find the measure of angle F. So we would say sine of 35 over 7.5 is equal to sine of f over 6.3. Okay, we need to solve this. Uh, multiply both sides by 6.3. 6.3 sine 35 divided by 7.5 is equal to sine of f. Let's bring the calculator out and see what we get. So 6.3 times sine of 35 equals that, and we want to divide by 7.5. Comes out to be 0.4818. That's equal to the sine of f. So we need to do sine minus 1, inverse sine, of 0.4818 and see what angle F measures. And then it needs to be measured to the nearest tenth. So second sine of 0.4818 comes out to be 28.8. So the measure of angle F is 28.8 to the nearest tenth. Okay, so um, those two problems from the top section of the page use the law of sines. Uh, here we have some triangles that are given to us rather than giving us the words and they want us to use the law of sines to find x and y. So let's look at say number nine and see what we need to do with that. So they're giving us a 15 but we, they're not giving us this opposite angle they are giving us enough information to find that angle because by triangle sums all of these angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So if I add 45 and 62 I get 107. 107 from 180 gives me 73. So this angle is 73 degrees at the top of the triangle. Now I've got enough to set up the law of sines. I can say sine 73 over 15 is equal to, and if we want to go for x first, is equal to sine of 62 over x. And we're going to cross multiply and solve for x. So we have 15, x is going to be equal to 15 
sine 62 divided by sine 73. Let's go ahead and go for y while we're at it. So uh, let me stick y. The ratio that goes with y is going to be sine 45 over y. It's going to be equal to the same thing. So when we cross and multiply for this one, we're going to get y equals 15 sine 45 divided by sine 73. So bring up the calculator and let's see what we get out of those. And they want us again to round to the nearest tenth. So uh, 15 sine 62, 15 times 62 sine equals divided by 73 sine equals 13.849, which is 13.8 for x. And do the same thing for y, 15 sine 45, 15 times 45 sine equals divided by sine 73 divided by 73 sine equals 11.09 which rounds off to one decimal place to 11.1 .1. and we have found x and we have found y for number nine uh, let's see let's look at one more here let's look at number 14 So looking at number 14 here, uh, let's see what we got. They're giving us uh, an angle and its opposite side. They're giving us an angle measure and its opposite side. So that's going to let us use the law of sines. And we are going to uh, have to figure out what this angle is here once we find out what x is. So the first thing we have to do is find out what angle x is. Then these two added together, subtracted from 180, is going to give me this angle here at y. And then I can use the law of sines. So first time I'm going to use the law of sines and figure out what angle x is. So are they, well, how many degrees that angle measures. So sine of 32 over 8.5 is equal to uh, sine of x over 7.3. Cross and multiply, uh, 7.3 sine 32 divided by 8.5 equals the sine of x. Let's see what we get. So 7.3 times 32 sine equals divided by 8.5 equals 0 0.4551 that's equal to sine of x so we do inverse sine of 0 0.4551 and we get 27.07, so 27.1. And again, these all need to be rounded to the nearest tenth. So x is 27.1. Now, since we got the 27.1 and the 32, we might as well find this angle here while we're at it. So we're going to add 32 onto that. Uh, change sign and add with 180 and we get 120.9 for this remaining angle so we're going to need that to find y uh, so let's see we've got sine 32 with 8.5 move this up So 
So sine 32 with 8.5 is equal to sine 120.9. with y. Cross multiply, solve for y. y is going to be 8.5 sine 120.9 divided by sine 32. So we have 8.5 times the sine of 120.9 equals divided by sine of 32 equals 13.76 which rounds off to be 13.8 so for that one we have y is 13.8 and x is 27.1